Nice. That's pretty slick. All right. Um, as he uh, helpfully pointed out, my name is Giuseppe. I work for a little company called IBM. Uh, I do developer advocacy there, and I am also on the Node.js Foundation Community Committee, and I have a, a real passion for uh, open source development and uh, the community overall, the open source community and, and the developer community, as you can tell by that. Uh, this is sort of the obligatory um, company slide, which I'll get into more in a moment. But last night when I was making these slides, this is my ending slide, and I thought it'd be great to put it up near the front, too, to try and, uh, you know, inject a little fun in here. These are GitHub selfies. If you're not familiar, um, there's a, a, a browser extension that when you submit a pull request, you can inject a little selfie. Um, and so these are actual selfies from pull requests uh, that I've done. It's a lot of fun. So I, I, uh, I suggest you uh, check that out and get involved in open source. Um, so, so back to the, to the main slide, I want to just quickly take a moment to um, highlight IBM a little bit in the, uh, in the open source community um, because I don't know if you know this, but they've been around for like 100 years, uh, actually more than that, um, and they've, they've really done a lot. They, uh, my, one of my colleagues spoke uh, on the first day, one of the keynotes, and I asked him to send me this slide, but he's so busy he forgot, but luckily I took a picture of it. So we're involved in the Linux Foundation, Apache, Eclipse. Uh, there's tons of information up there, but like $2 billion uh, in, in dollars in, in open source. Uh, we've been involved for decades in the open source community. And uh, uh, I always try to highlight that whenever I talk to people, because I think it's, it's really um, something to be proud of, the company that you work for is so involved in it. Um, and then last night, I tried to just do a quick Google search of things that I knew were sort of current uh, that we're involved in, and uh, threw them up in the slide. So over on this side here is uh, my friend Roderick, who, who almost single-handedly wrote OpenWhisk, the uh, serverless platform that's open source under Apache. Uh, you know, there, there are tons of other committers, and, and, but, but he, he did a lot of the core work from, from early on. Uh, Todd Moore is the chair of the governing board of CNCF. Sam Ruby, who lives just near me, is uh, um, uh, the co-chair of the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, my good buddy Angel Diaz helped write the DOM spec, the document object model specification. Uh, so this is just kind of a sampling of, of the work that we get to do at IBM in the community. And IBM's really focused on developer advocacy uh, as well, and this is a, a really great platform that we built that is uh, designed to help engineers, uh, uh, you know, be more productive in their everyday work. All this stuff is open source. It highlights some of the open source activity that we do. Um, it's a really great platform, and I wanted to quickly point out these really cool code patterns that are all open source. They have, like, architecture diagrams and the GitHub repos and, and all sorts of great stuff in there. So that's kind of my uh, obligatory IBM spiel. Uh, but they're really generous sending me here and, and helping support us in the open source community, so it's really great. So, why am I here? Maybe even why are you here? Uh, the open source community really needs people like us to, to thrive and to continue and, and to be successful. So uh, it's been a passion of mine um, since before even joining the, the Node Foundation to just try and uh, get engineers more involved in open source uh, and, and continue the great work that's going on there. <clears throat> so what is open source? I, I think a lot of people kind of have a fuzzy uh, definition here, but I, I went straight to uh, an internet search engine and uh, pulled this up. And, you know, I think people get stuck on the first one, that the code is freely available, but, but the important bits are number two and three, that it can be uh, redistributed and that it may be modified. So th those are, I think, two of the real key points in uh, open source. So definitely check the license. You've probably heard about a little company called Facebook and, and their React licensing, which we won't get into the weeds of that. Luckily, that's all squared away. Um, but like, my point is licensing is important. So definitely keep an eye on that. If you are getting involved or if you're open sourcing a project, I, I recommend this website, Choose a License. If you just Google, you know, if you forget the URL every time, I, I have to Google it. Um, not Google, internet search it. Um, and uh, 
this one always comes up for me, but it's, it's really informative in terms of understanding what the different licenses are and what they do and how they protect you and what their, their focuses are. Um, so it's a really good resource. I, I highly recommend it. So uh, this talk, I kind of wanted to get people thinking more about open source in a variety of ways. Uh, I think people get hung up on and, and intimidated by the thought of, say, contributing to Ruby or Rails or Node.js or uh, you know, some of these big platforms that may be a little daunting. But it's important to remember that the, the smaller packages uh, and, and the smaller you know, like UI-related elements and utilities uh, are all a part of the, UI, uh, the, uh, the open source ecosystem. And there are, uh, are lots of ways to get involved and, and get coding and, and contribute. So, uh, you know, a good example is, say I want to do, you know, a Gatsby site or, or uh, a Hexo site or something. I may, you know, use a theme. I would fork it. Maybe I find some improvements, then I can push those back upstream. I get uh, uh, upstream improvements back down to my, my um, uh, theme. So, you know, there are a variety of ways that you can kind of get involved in open source. Uh, this is another example of a small uh, utility that you may be familiar with. Uh, it's super simple. But you know, this is fully open source. If, if you're using a small tool like this, you could, um, you know, if you found any bugs or, or enhancements, you could get involved there. And I, and I put this up here too to just remind people that you know, if you, it, with this sort of stuff comes a little bit of responsibility, so be careful. Don't just take it out and, and shut the internet down, um, as you, you may have heard about that little story. Uh, this is just a sample slide. I thought it looked really cool and, and made me look smart, Venn diagrams. Um, which was, I don't know if you saw that, it's green eggs and ham. Dr. Seuss? Anyway, I, I liked it. So why get into open source? There are a variety of reasons, and I feel like the, the first one there is, is one that uh, is most common in, in my experience, is that your company, or your project, your team may be doing some uh, application development, and you know, it's so common these days to, to pull in a variety of uh, uh, packages and dependencies, and, and, you know, most of them are probably open source. <clears throat> so you may find a feature or a bug that you want to, uh, uh, you know, push back upstream and, and contribute to the community. So that's a really common use case. Um, but, you know, there are a variety of ways of why you might want to get into open source. Uh, for me, you know, another part of it is, is my passion for the community and, and wanting to uh, help engineers, um, but like increasing, you know, learning. If you're new to development, you may want to uh, look at, uh, you know, one of the tools in your, in your uh, tooling framework to, to get involved in. So there's a variety of ways that you, why you might want to get into open source. Uh, I also wanted to highlight this last one because I have a, a particular story that, that, that goes along with it. So before joining IBM, I worked at a company called Adobe, uh, actually at Behance, which was acquired by Adobe. And we were doing a lot of open source work as a part of our, our, our regular uh, work. And we were using JS Hint uh, extensively and, and were kind of improving it. We ended up becoming most of the, the core team. And we started working with somebody named Henry Zhu, who was a part of the JS Hint community. And in working with him, we you know, got to know that he was passionate about open source, passionate about code, was easy to work with. And we said, hey, we're hiring. You know, are you interested in coming and joining our team? And it happened that he was. And he moved across the country to New York, uh, joined our team. If, I don't know if you're familiar with the name Henry Zhu, but he uh, basically, we, we merged ES, uh, JS Hint into ES Lint, and then he moved over to Babel and is pretty much running, uh, um, managing the Babel uh, um, repository. And not long ago, he left Adobe on good terms um, to focus on open source full time. And so he's doing all of his Babel work and the related packages that go along with that and has set up a, a Patreon, I don't know how you say that, but a page where you can uh, contribute to, to his efforts. So I highly recommend you, you look into that. 
But um, it, it's just, a, I think, a really good story of being involved in open source can open up these other doors for you in your, in your engineering career. And there have been a few talks uh, at this, this great conference, which I'm really happy to be at, uh, around open source. And, and one of them, um, from Eileen, I noticed in the, in the uh, abstract this great uh, tidbit that I wanted to include in my talk as well about GitHub's community guidelines, which is a great place to kind of get familiar with what makes a good open source community if you wanted to get involved with them. Um, so uh, as she recommends, I do as well. You know, go, go there and, and check that out. I'm gonna put all these links into a tweet or something later, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. But uh, this is a really good resource. And um, this is, a, I think, complementary to that. Uh, this is called uh, Great for New Contributors. It's a really great resource for if you're not sure where you want to start. This highlights uh, really good communities that, that kind of meet the GitHub standards for uh, uh, being a welcoming and inviting community. Um, and, and there are a variety of ways that you can kind of search through here and, and find different places to get involved. Uh, and I'll point out that Node is, is actually the, the one right after Moby. And if you're, if you're wanting to just, you, you know where you want to get involved, uh, I suggest you go to their GitHub page, go to their issues page, and look for uh, help wanted or good first issue. Um, particularly the good first issue label, that's kind of become the standard for getting people more involved in uh, contributing to the repositories. So um, that's a really good standard, so I recommend, you know, that's a great place to start if you know where you want to focus your time. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time, too, just pointing out that contributions aren't always code, right? So a lot of the work that I do is in the community. And I, I pulled this from our community committee page, that, that code commits uh, is basically not the only means to uh, contributions. So let's take a, a quick moment to, to point out some other areas. And, and again, this, is, this talk is kind of meant to sort of expand your thinking about different ways that you can get involved in open source. So, um, you know, testing, uh, obviously still kind of code related, but that's like a huge area that, that a lot of open source places, uh, open source communities could use help with, so I highly recommend that. Um, docs are a great place, and in fact, my next slide here, I was getting involved in Gatsby JS, and I was going through a tutorial, and I found this bottom one here, most of the export default functions weren't wrapped in this paren, but this one was, and it kind of stuck in my head, like why does this one have it, but the, all the other ones don't, and it really bugged me. So I looked into it further, I couldn't find a good reason, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna submit a pull request and fix that so nobody else like, sits there wondering about it for a while. And in doing that, I went through the tutorial and I found all these other little things. And one of the reasons why I wanted to highlight this is Kyle here, who, who, who manages this uh, uh, repository, was really welcoming and really supportive and really happy to have me you know, pushing even my tiny little wording changes. So as you can see, he's got 100 and thumbs up and you know, it was just really welcoming and I was, uh, it was really refreshing to have his response to my pull request. And it turns out this little parentheses thing was, uh, was just prettier kind of choking on one of their uh, export default function bodies. So, um, but my point is it was a really good interaction and, and um, you know, made me want to come back and, and do more. Uh, but like issue triage is another one. I think I have a slide for that too. Uh, uh, my friend Rich in, in the Node community um, is like trying to manage the amazing amount of Node issues that, that are uh, in the um, repository. And so he tweeted this out, like if you have any familiarity, get involved, get into the issues, see if there's anything that you can help us close, things like that. So uh, like issue triage is another important way that people can get involved, project management kind of stuff. Uh, Node's been working on a new website for a while, and I'll kind of get into some of the Node uh, initiatives in a minute. But like even legal, like there, there, there are so many ways that are like not code related that, that you could get involved into open source. So um, yeah, another, another uh, uh, stock slide. So getting back to, to this kind of concept, I thought I would take a moment to uh, share a little bit about the Node Foundation. So I've been with the Foundation for a couple of years now. It's um, 
Well, I'll read this really quickly. The, the mission is to enable widespread adoption and help accelerate development of Node.js and other related modules. We do this through an open governance model that encourages participation and technical contribution and by providing a framework for long-term stewardship by an ecosystem in, invested in Node.js's success. So I think nobody would argue about the JavaScript community and their passion and their, their uh, investment in, in our community. But I think the important part here uh, is the framework and the open governance model. So like everything that we do in the foundation, not everything, but as much as possible is on GitHub, through issues, through pull requests, through public meetings, which I'll get to in a minute. But like it is all public and it's very uh, um, open to people getting involved. So I highly encourage you to consider that, whether it's the Node Foundation or uh, any of the other foundations that are out there. So to dive into that just a little bit further, um, with the foundation, there is a, a, a board at the top, and then below that, there are these two primary committees. It's the Technical Steering Committee and then the Community, community Committee. Um, there are a couple other committees, but those are the two top-level ones, and they're both accessible to, to anyone uh, you know, that's, that hasn't participated yet, so uh, if you go to their respective repos, there are... It is outlined how you can get more involved. Um, and, and we're actually refining the process even further on the community committee. Um, but you can, you can even just be an observer of, of the activities that are happening there and the, and the public meetings, whether it's on the technical side or the community side. And then below those committees, there are a variety of working groups and initiatives that really could use help, uh, you know, more contributors, getting more people involved. Uh, so, for example, you know, performance and security, internationalization, uh, diagnostics, the, the website redesign, like there, there are a whole list of, uh, of, of places where you can get involved that I, I couldn't even list them all here. And a lot of them, uh, if not all of them, have their own repositories that have clear guidelines on how to get involved, how to contribute, um, and, and there are even some strategic initiatives uh, uh, at the top level committees as well. So I, I recommend you kind of look around there and get involved. Um, mentorship is another one that is an initiative that the community committee is, is really spearheading. So if you have node experience and you want to help other people get involved, uh, that's a great way as well. And then events. Uh, I don't know if anyone's heard of Node School, but it's this really great framework for um, putting together, I mean, you can do it by yourself, but it's geared towards having groups of people get together and work through uh, CLI-driven um, workshops and stuff. It's a really great uh, event framework. Uh, Node Together, uh, Code and Learn, or, or even just getting involved in your, your local meetups. And then I'll also point out that Node.js has a Medium publication, and we're oftentimes looking for help with, uh, you know, not just contributing to the publication, but also editing from a technical perspective or from an editorial perspective. So, again, a variety of ways to get involved. This is just a snapshot of some of the initiatives that we have in the community committee that we actually need someone to, to spearhead. Um, there's a whole list of ones that we have, uh, um, you know, champions for already above this, but... But this is just an example of some of the things that, that we're looking to do and uh, the associated issues that, that, that are kind of driving these particular initiatives. Uh, so I suggest you, if you're interested, go, go to the community committee and, and poke around. Now, as I said, all of our meetings uh, uh, are, are largely uh, public and streamed to uh, uh, YouTube. And anyone can go and observe and post questions and get involved. Um, so this is really like a great way to kind of get started. If you go to nojs.org slash calendar, it'll redirect to this Google calendar and you can subscribe to it and have it right in your, you know, your device or what have you. I have all of these that, that give me alerts on my phone. So that's a fantastic way to like stay up to date on, on what's happening. And like I said, they are all uh, uh, streamed live to YouTube. So uh, another pro tip is if you subscribe to the channel and then click on the bell, you can be alerted of when uh, they're about to go live and then you know, go and, and watch it or even just have it streaming in the background and keep an ear on what's going on. Uh, it's really interesting to hear 
you know, what, what, what's the status of certain developments or community initiatives or, or what have you. Uh, so this is all very much out in the public and as Dee Shaw says, uh, you know, we encourage people to get involved. Um, so this is a great resource. I, I get alerts on my desktop all the time for, um, for upcoming uh, meetings. So another stock slide, but I thought I'd add a little bit here. So how, how it, you know, I think the, uh, um, well, I, I like to maintain my work-life balance. So even though that I'm really passionate about open source, uh, I like to do you know, my stuff during the daytime and then have my uh, personal life in the evening time. So the you know, question comes up, how do you get your company more involved in open source? And there are lots of articles online that will kind of dive into really specific stuff, but I think the important thing is integrating it into your culture and, and have it be a part of your conversation and have it kind of come up in you know, sprint planning meetings and when you're talking about perhaps technical debt, uh, setting aside time for that, you, you may want to work in some time to uh, do some open source work, whether it's on a project that you know, your company or your team is using and you found a bug and you know, we got to go back and, and address that. Um, I think just generally talking more about open source in your uh, workplace starts to engender that into the conversation and you can more easily kind of work it into your, to your workflow. And one way that we were doing it at uh, Adobe, which was really um, just a really, I think, great way to kind of get involved in open source is we essentially had open source Fridays, although what we did was, and by the way, this is a great website, opensourcefriday.com. Uh, I think it's in partnership with GitHub and just encouraging people to, to, to try and do some open source on uh, Fridays in particular. But what we were doing at Adobe is we would alternate every other Friday. Uh, one Friday we would do our open source work and the other Friday we would do uh, uh, squashing bugs. And so it was great to like every Friday we'd come in, we'd kind of be excited about not doing our you know, grind of feature development and knew that we could spend some time on either open source uh, one Friday and the next Friday we would, we would all like huddle around and, and, and prioritize bugs and, and knock them down. So I think that's a great way to like get your team invested in, 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 in you know, both crushing bugs and doing open source, you kind of balance it out. Um, so, so I highly you know, recommend uh, taking that sort of approach. Um, I was going to take a moment, if you want, to just quickly show you uh, the kind of standard GitHub flow um, for working with a, uh, oh, is that not going to be like that? Hang on a sec, let me see if I can do this. I only have a couple of minutes. Uh, if you are at all interested in seeing what it's like to, uh, you know, what, what a, a typical GitHub workflow is. so. What I typically do is, and uh, you know, you 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 have a project you want to commit uh, contribute to. You uh, no, not that. I want to uh, fork this project, right? Hopefully, this will be kind of smooth and fast. Uh, so I send it over to my repository, and uh, yeah, it might not be fast enough. Now oh, here we go. Right, so here's kind of the flow. I've forked it, I grab it, I come over here, and uh, I clone it. And this is really small, so it should only take a moment. And then what I typically do is I go right back over to the uh, upstream, and I grab that, and uh, I add it as a um, uh, upstream. Right, nope. Oh. Uh, git remote add upstream. No. Oh, thank you. Uh, git, thank you. Uh, git remote add upstream. Right, so now if I check this, I have that, both the upstream and the local. So I get in here. Oops. And, you know, git add. Uh, 
right? So now I have my PR. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, git push, sorry. I haven't done this in a little while. So now I should be able to do my git PR. Right, so this is just kind of a standard workflow, right? You uh, uh, fork it, clone it, add your upstream, make your changes, commit them, push them, create a PR, and then I should be able to just jump right over here, and there it is. So if that were an open source repository, boom, I'm, I'm involved, I've got my first PR open. Uh, if I wanted to, I could add a GitHub selfie, and then that's it. So uh, that actually is all that I have. Thanks for listening. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Joe. Thanks very much, Joe. We've got a bunch of questions. Um, as I said, a lot of my career has revolved around very similar stuff, so I'm excited about almost all of these questions. Um, a couple of them, uh, the top rated one and uh, one or two down below, um, all revolve around, uh, oh, was the top one. This thing changes in real time. <laughs> I've started a repo. I've started a project. I've done, I've done a cool thing. How do I get other people to contribute? That's a really good question. Um, I, I would recommend like uh, getting involved in your community and, and kind of raising awareness in your community, <coughs> uh, whether that's in person or online. Um, but yeah, just basically, uh, the more you engage the community, the more they'll be engaged in the work that you're working on. And I think a perfect follow-up to that is um, uh, Jan uh, asks us, uh, it's hard to become a contributor while being a newbie in OSS uh, with no reputation. What's a starting point to get there? I have really strong opinions about this. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that I, I had some up there, uh, but I, I think that you just need to do it. And so here, I, I, I meant to include the story uh, in the talk, but I've, I've tried to contribute a couple of times that... Um, uh, were rejected. It was, it was actually a silly thing, like, for example, a node project, they had trailing commas, and I went in and fixed them all, and they were like, no, dummy, we want trailing commas, that's what in our style linting, and I was like, oh, shoot, I'm an idiot. But that's okay, like, it's okay to make mistakes, people are But you learn. I learn, and, I, and I, that, I, that's happened to me a couple of times, but I just kept doing it, I, and, you know, eventually right. you find nice people and you get involved. And when you're involved in a group of people who have expose themselves by sharing their work and putting themselves open to criti criticism. They're also asking for help. And there's no aspect of open source that I've ever encountered where if you show up, no matter what your reputation is, and you say, hey, I'd really love to help. What can I do? I have never seen someone turned down or turned away. So that's not a fear you yeah. need to have. Yeah. And especially with the Node Foundation stuff, we're like really happy to have people get involved. We have these code and learn events. We like promote new contributors. You know, people cheer and retweet. We are really excited about it. Okay, now what about Andri, who likes code but hates people? I think the internet was made for you, man, wherever you are. <laughs> There's so much code to be written. Um, that's just welcome, right? Yes. <laughs> Next, um, how many hours a week do you contribute? Uh, not as many as I would like, but I'm working on that. I gotta get better at delegating. Um, but I would say maybe six to eight hours on open source stuff. Okay, cool. But, but yeah. Like a work day? Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe a little generous. That, uh, yeah, around there. Okay. Um, in your experience, do companies hire dedicated open source contributors uh, to work on open source within work time? Um, yes, I've seen that. Like uh, Adobe and Behance was a really good example. Um, and for you know, most of the time that I was there, we did have time set aside to do open source work. And Henry uh, really carved out a lot of time to work on Babel um, while he was there. So I've yeah. seen it done. I've seen a lot of people hired on their contribution reputation. Yep. And I've seen a few dozen hired to be full-time contributors for a time, you know, a, a, like a year when Drupal 8 really, really needed to get out, and uh, a company called Accelerant just took their most senior engineer and said, go do whatever you can. Um, I've seen other, um, if you're an agency and you're working on billable hours, it's really tough. Yeah. If you're VC funded or you're building a project, uh, there are a lot more opportunities to direct 
uh, money towards uh, R&D and, and product quality and stuff. Yeah, but I suggest trying to carve out a little time, you know, and work that out with your, your uh, team and stuff. And, and I should also mention IBM actually pays us. Uh, there are lots of people that work at IBM that are dedicated to open source. Yeah. That is all that they do. And IBM pays them to do it. So right. uh, I should definitely give props there. And if you are an agency, you can actually work a contribution into your cost structure. Your clients, if you're delivering open source based solutions, uh, you're getting millions of hours of other people's work for free. Your clients are. You yep. can easily work in eight or 16 hours a month per developer in your cost structure and, and make that happen as Especially well. Especially if you're like a Drupal consultancy or a node consultancy kind of place. Yeah, for sure. All right. It is. Lunchtime. Thank you very much, everyone. I think Joe could talk with you after as well. Yeah, I'll be at the IBM booth. Thank Have you. It.